What's up, Natty Trap Daddy? So today we're talking about Mike Menser. Now, I've been asked with increasing frequency about his trading philosophies, so today, let's get into it. Now, just for a little bit of background, Mike competed in the 1970s. He had an incredible physique, very, very well developed, obviously not natural, but he had the first perfect score in IFBB history, which makes me very happy, the idea that someone who is, you know, arm dominant can do well. Unfortunately, his career culminated in the 1980 Mr. Olympia, which was by far the most controversial decision of all time. He placed fifth, which is pretty shocking to go from a perfect score to fifth. This is a competition where Arnold came back and destroyed everyone according to the placings, but every other competitor was very, very unhappy with this ruling. And I think it is overall pretty clear that it was very political and he should not have won. In fact, a lot of people said that he should not have been even in the top five. Speculate on position. I'd say that take Arnold out because he wouldn't have made the case. And actually the training styles of Arnold and Mike Menser were quite different. Arnold was very much into coming. Do not come. (laughs) <laughs> higher volume training, whereas Mike was into lower volume training, but a higher effort per set. And this is something that I get asked about quite a bit and with increasing regularity, uh, which is part of the reason why I am making this video. A lot of people will think that I am against the heavy duty method because it is lower volume and I am known for higher volume training. Actually, I'm in favor of it. And when I look at training, I just see levers that you can pull. So you have your volume, you have your intensity, frequency, you have your effort per set, you have your recovery time, you have exercise selection, etc. And so with heavy duty training, it's basically putting effort all the way down, frequency not high, and then your volume not high. And this can definitely work. And I would say that everyone should try this style of training at least once. I've done videos on it before, and I think it can be a good idea, at least to teach you what true effort is. You only have one set to put it all on the line. You're thinking about that set all week or every 10 days or however long often it is, and you've just got to get it done. It's not like a three by 10 where it's like, yeah, the first set is kind of tough, and then it's a little bit tough, and then it's like kind of tough. No, you have one fucking set. One fucking set to get it done. And I actually like this as a starting point because you're starting with a low quantity but a high quality of set. Then you can increase the quantity later if you need to. A lot of people start with the opposite. They're doing a high quantity, a high number of sets, but none of the sets are that hard. And then what do you do? You try to increase the quality later. That doesn't work as well. If you start with this kind of program... At the very least, it teaches you how to work very, very hard per set, which is something that a lot of people just don't know how to do. The main trouble with this training style is dogmatism. I've interacted with quite a few heavy-duty or high-intensity training fanboys, and they are some of the most dogmatic individuals that I've ever interacted with in the fitness industry. They just, they can't even really communicate, it's just, no, uh, this person, this person's big, they did this, so I do this. And I'm like, so are you big? I'm, I'm gonna be big. Okay, buddy. And again, you have all these levers you can pull, and these people believe that you can only pull one in order to make progress. You know, according to Menser, if you're not progressing, it's either because the set isn't hard enough, just this one set, or you're not recovering enough. So if it's been 10 days since your last workout and you're not progressing, well, you should just wait longer. This doesn't make sense, okay? Because it's certainly possible to wait too long, right? To start degrading if you are waiting 10 days or 14 days, especially if you are not as much of a high responder to the training, and especially if you are not, you know, enhanced. And so I've done lower volume programs, and they can work, but I actually found better success from taking that same mentality and just doing more, especially on some muscle groups. Something like my hamstrings, heavy duty would actually be pretty decent, but for like rear delts or side delts, even one set to true failure and beyond is just not doing that much. There is individual variation. I am not that sensitive to training, 
and I'm also quite resistant to training. So for me, it makes sense to do more. If someone is very sensitive to training, which is typically like the genetic elite, some people who are like very, very responsive to training, right? You see them just blow up with this one set protocol. If you're very sensitive to training, this might be fine. If you are not as resilient, this might be fine as well because you might need longer to recover. Um, so it depends on how much you need and how much you can handle. Let me repeat that because it's important. How much do you need and how much can you handle? Those are two different things and something that heavy duty in a lot of ways ignores. And in a lot of ways, Menser was a genius, but that doesn't mean he was right about everything. It still needs to be individualized. If the plan says you need seven days to recover, but you're actually recovering in four days, you might be wasting your time or you might even be regressing. You know, some of these protocols I've seen, like training once every two weeks. Again, if you're if you're enhanced and you have that muscle protein synthesis going on all the time, you know, your frequency is a lot more flexible. But if you're natural, a lot of these principles just won't apply. And there's actually a YouTube channel that has been taking Mike's old seminars and discussions and reposting them in, you know, a high quality, well edited format. It's called John Little. I'll link it in the description below. I highly encourage everyone to check that out because it is very thought-provoking material. It might not be the perfect system for you, but I think thinking about this style of training and actually considering it is a good idea. You might need to tweak the frequency a bit. You might need to tweak the volume a bit. Um, you might need to change the exercise selection. But I think a lot of people, especially over the past four or five years, they've gotten into this idea that like you start with volume and then you go towards quality. I think that's backwards. I do high volume, but the quality per set, it has to come first. Otherwise, it's just so easy to spin your wheels and not do very much at all. Okay, so quality before quantity. Now, I don't think Mike was dishonest at all. In fact, the more I listen to him and read about him, the more I respect his character. Uh, in contrast, the more I read about Arnold, the less I <laughs> the less I respect him. But there was something on the channel that kind of caught my eye. It's something known as the Colorado Experiment. And this is something that I've known about for a while, and I've been asked about it a few times as well. Basically, uh, this guy who used to be much, much larger, he shrank down, and then he decided to train for one month to see how much muscle he could gain, on this sort of high intensity training, heavy duty style of training. And he gained 46 pounds in a month, 46 pounds in a month. Now he was likely on anabolics. They were quite prolific around this time. Uh, he was regaining muscle and also the body composition numbers that they cited were a little bit suspect. Test called the radioisotope assay test, which showed that Casey lost 17 pounds of body fat during that 28 day period. So we know all the weight that he gained was pure muscle tissue. And it wasn't 46 pounds. Since Casey also lost 17 pounds of fat at the same time, he actually gained 63 pounds of muscle. They said that he lost massive amounts of fat. In reality, he almost certainly gained fat while gaining muscle at the same time. And so the numbers are clearly skewed to try to push these machines. It was the idea that, oh, these machines are superior for muscle growth. And it was basically just, you know, old school fitness marketing. And so this experiment was basically marketing. It wasn't actually an experiment. And this is something that I've been cited multiple times saying, oh, high intensity training, look what this did. Well, for multiple factors, the steroids, the fake body composition, the muscle memory situation, the guy who has already been on steroids and, and is regaining his muscle with steroids, etc. Not really valid. Through to the full actualization of one's muscular potential in one year or less. That's right. It is possible to actualize your full muscular potential in one year or less. I also think the fear of overtraining is not really well founded. The idea that if you're not progressing, you should always do less. You should always recover more. You should always just have this one really hard set. It's not going to be individualized to the individual or to the individual muscle groups on an individual. Uh, I think this is a good place 
to start training and something to think about. But as a final product, I don't see very many naturals who are lifting in this way, especially later in their career. Now, I know some guys built their physique this way, and I do think you can get probably 80, 85, maybe even 90% of the way there with this style of training. But to think it is somehow better than doing a little bit more volume with slightly less effort per set is wrong. On the other hand, the good news is that if you are pressed for time and you only want to do one all out set and then add in intensity techniques, drop sets, partial, slow eccentric, partner assisted reps, whatever, I think that is a viable way to go about things. Again, all these levers, if you don't have much time doing less volume and more effort, I think that is viable. It might not be ideal, but it is certainly something that you can try in your training. For more about the training side of things, you can consider grabbing a copy of my book. It goes into all this kind of stuff, volume, intensity, frequency, exercise selection, has hundreds of movements, You know, shows you how to set up your own training plan. It is $20 runos. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.